There's no place where we would rather be tonight. So if that means that we just have to dig a little deeper tonight, God, that's what we'll do. That's what we do. We've come here just to look to you. We didn't come here, God, because of numbers, but we came, God, just to seek the face of the Father. So, Lord, we love you, and we honor you, we praise you tonight. Hallelujah. And I have a hope that is my anchor. All the wind and waves may rage, but his word keeps on holding me. And I have a peace beyond all measure. I found a joy that will never fade away. And I've got joy down in my soul. I've got a peace that I won't let go. Like a river rising higher. I've got joy. I've got joy. And I've got joy down in my soul. I've got a that I won't let go Like a river rising higher I've got joy I've got joy And I know the mercy that has my own And now I stand redeemed But His blood has washed me I know the man who's conquered sorrows. He's a joy I found that will never fade away. And I've got joy down in my soul. I've got a peace that I won't let go. Like a river rising higher. I've got joy. I've got joy. And I've got joy down in my soul. I've got a peace. And I won't let go Like a river rising higher I've got joy I've got joy The river is rising, rising, rising The river is rising, rising, rising The river is rising, rising, rising The river of joy The river of joy the river is rising, rising, rising. The river is rising, rising, rising. The river is rising, rising, rising. The river of joy, the river of joy. The river is rising, rising, rising. The river is rising, rising, rising. The river is rising, rising, rising. The river of joy, the river of joy. It's over my head, it's over my head. It's over my head, it's over my head, it's over my head, it's over my head, the river of joy, the river of joy, it's over my head, 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 the river of joy, the river of joy, and I've got joy down in my soul, I've got a peace that I won't let.
Father, we come before you right now, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your love, Father, for your people, Lord, for your church, Father. But Lord, we come before you right now, Lord, knowing that you are an ever-present help in the time of need, Lord. Father, we come before you for the leadership, Father, of our church, Lord, for our pastors, Father God. Lord, we pray for your anointing over them, your blessing, your protection over them, Lord. Pray that you increase them, Father, in knowledge, Father, and understanding and wisdom for our church, Lord. Lord, we pray for our president right now, Lord, for President Trump, Lord. We pray that you would surround him with godly men, Father, with godly counsel. Lord, we pray that you give him the strength, Father, to do what is right before you, Lord. Lord, we pray for your blessing over his family, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for all those in our church right now, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, knowing, Lord, that you Father, you are the great healer, Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, by your anointing, Father, COVID will step back, Father. In Jesus' name, there's no place in our church, Father, among our family and among our friends. You said, Father God, that no deadly weapon shall be formed against us, Lord. So in Jesus' name, we bind that spirit of infirmity, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray, Father God, your anointing, your covering, Lord, over every person in this place. Lord, we thank you, Father. We pray for financial blessing, Lord, for healing for the sick, Father. We 
we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Welcome to our midweek refresher. Welcome. This is the church. Amen. Two or three gathered in his name. There he is. Amen. So I have the tithes and the announcements. Uh, tomorrow and Friday, we are still having Bible studies on via Zoom. Connect with your team leader for location and details. And um, so that's still tomorrow. That's still going on. Zoom is very powerful still. Amen. And then Sunday, we are back here at what time? Nine. You start? 8.30, 8.30 for prayer. Let's get in here at 9, and we start like, disinfecting the chairs. And please keep, um, practice keep social distancing. Try not to hug or, or um, shake hands. Just keeping that in mind. Amen? And so tonight I have the privilege to share the offering. Amen. How do we keep our faith strong in the midst of a financial trouble? How do we, how do we trust God in the midst of a pandemic? Through pay cuts, layoffs, furloughs, and rising up bills. The answer is seeking God first above everything else. Jesus is speaking in Matthew 6, 26, 33 through 34. New Living Translation says, Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring the, its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Powerhouse Church, I want to encourage you tonight. Do not worry or not try not to fear what everything else is going on. God is in control. You're under God's heavenly economy. He is our source and creator Everything in the world is his. You belong to him. Are you not more valuable than the birds that's in the air? He takes care of his own. Do you believe that tonight? As believers, we know that God is our provider. He's our source of security, not our money, not the economy. No matter what's happening, God knows exactly what is going on in our lives. He will be there for us and take care of us. Amen? Amen. Ushers. There's three weeks we can give. There's online powerhouse church, oc.org forward slash give. You can also text to give at 710-1981, and you could call this number anytime. It's 562-298-7145. Let's pray for this offering. Father, as we seek you tonight, I pray for these tithes and offerings that they will bless you. Help us not to be fearful or worry, but rather to trust and believe in you and what your word says. Your word says that you're going to give us a hundredfold. We do not trust the economy, but we trust in you, my God. You still give promotions. You still give jobs, Lord. And I pray, God, that you continue to, God, reign upon your people, Father. And I pray, God, to protect those who, who need a job. Bless them with even a, a big job, Lord God, because we know, God, that you are going to take good care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. And I've got joy down in my soul. I've got peace that I won't let go. Like a river rising higher. I've got joy. I've got joy, and I've got joy down in my soul. I've got a peace that I won't let go, like a river rising higher. I've got joy, I've got joy. How's everybody doing tonight? 
good to be here at our midweek refresher. Amen. Thank you for those who are watching, and uh, we just want to let you know as well that we are praying for you. Amen. And we're, we're, we look forward to uh, having you back uh, when you are well. And so uh, it's, it's good. Amen. It's good to be back. We were, me and my family, we were out for a week. Amen. And it's always good to be back in the house of God, back in, you know, just connecting with you and, and just to be in God's presence. Amen. There's nothing like being in God's presence. How many know that that is so, it is so amazing to be in the presence of God? Amen? Amen. Just like uh, David said, and I believe Richard said it, is uh, uh, we know that the presence of God is there where the Bible says that when two or more gather, there he is. Amen? And so we don't have to be looking around who's here and who isn't because we know that the scripture says again, where two or more gather, there he is. Amen? So God is here. Amen? And so if you're you're the, the person that you're so used to seeing here at church is not here. Guess what? God is still here. And that's the most important uh, thing that's vital is that knowing that you come to church to see God. Amen? We come to see God. And so uh, God is good, and I'm excited to be ministering tonight uh, and to see what God has in store for us. Amen? How many ready for the word tonight? Amen. And for those who are watching, I, I pray that you're excited and ready to hear what God has for you tonight as well. Amen. Tonight I want to continue where I left off from last Sunday. I was ministering on a message uh, that I had entitled, entitled, Finishing Your Race. Finishing Your Race. And how many of us tonight are still running the race? Come on, we're still running the race. In spite of this virus, we're still running the race. In spite of everything that's going on in our world with all the chaos, we're still running the race. Amen? And we're going to keep running the race until he comes back. Amen? And to our Lord and Savior comes back, amen, and we're going to keep fighting, we're going to keep pressing forward, we're going to keep believing, amen, that God has great things in store for all of us, amen. Praise the Lord. You can go ahead and turn your Bibles, uh, open up your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 tonight. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. And for those who were not here last Sunday or you had the opportunity to listen to it on uh, our YouTube uh, just want to let you know that uh, you can go back on there. We are back on Facebook Live, amen, from this point on. So we are going to be having every service back on Facebook. So you can let your friends and family members know that we are back on Facebook and also on YouTube. Uh, spread the word, amen. We want people to hear the message, hear the word, word of God. We want them to get ministered as well, amen. I do want to just give one more quick note. Uh, you know, we, our, our family vacation, we came back Sunday and... Uh, I was here Monday night to, to just help out at the women's discipleship uh, to usher and just kind of set up and, and all, all that good stuff. And uh, I just want to say that uh, Sister Brenda and my daughter Tiana, they ministered a powerful word. I mean, if women, if you know somebody that, that just needs a word, uh, you need to just send them to our link, amen, our Facebook, our YouTube. Uh, it's a powerful word. Uh, let me tell you something. We got some anointed, powerful preacher women in our church, amen, and I, I'm proud to say that I'm, I'm blessed to, you know, in our church that we have some strong women of God that know how to preach, amen, excited to see what God is doing in our women, and I know that there's more women, amen, that, that can preach, amen, and they will be given that opportunity, amen, so just continue eh, to pray and be faithful, and, and, and God has something good in store for us all, amen, praise the Lord. Uh, before I read that scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, I opened up uh, last Sunday with the scripture that's found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and you can write the scripture down, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, and just to narrow it down, there's a, here is the Apostle Paul said this, he says, the time of my death is near, I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. I have remained faithful, amen? I, I, I love Paul and his testimony and his life story. Because we see this man who had transitioned from one to another, amen? He went from being a persecutor to now being a follower and someone who was determined to follow Christ to the very end, amen? And he says here, I have fought the good fight and I have finished the race. How many of us know someone who has started the fight, who started the journey of serving God and no longer is serving him? Come on, we all know someone. We all know somebody, whether it's a family member or a friend or a co-worker or a neighbor. We know someone that 
that testified that they gave their life to Jesus. They were serving God. They were going to church. They were in fellowship, go, doing all the things a part of the church, being a part of the church. And somewhere they stopped serving him. They stopped having connection. They stopped being intimate with the Lord. They stopped praying. They stopped reading the word. Uh, they, 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 they distanced themselves from everybody in the house of God and are no longer running the race. And I tell you, that's not what God wants for us as believers. God wants us to all finish this race. But more, more importantly, he wants us to remain faithful. Amen? He wants us to be faithful, but also he wants us to, he wants us to be fruitful. It's not just about being faithful, but it's about being fruitful. Amen? You can be faithful in church. You can be faithful in ministry. But if you're not fruitful... Meaning that if, you, if there's no change in you, amen, if your old life is, is, if your old life is, if you're still holding on to that old life, if you're still thinking the way that you used to think, if you're still talking the way you used to talk, if, if you're still doing uh, the, the, the things that you used to do, and there's no change, that's not fruitfulness. That's not fruitfulness. Fruitfulness means that you're changing. The way you talk changes. Your thinking changes. Your attitude changes. I mean, what I'm talking about, our attitude has to change. Our heart needs to change. And so that's what being fruitful is. And people see it. You know how, you're, you know how people know that you're changed because they see the fruit. They see your lifestyle. They see the difference in how, uh, the, the way you do things now. And people will notice when you have been completely transformed by the power of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Here in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says this. As for us, we have all these great witnesses who, who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound. Come on. Listen to this. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been already marked out before us. Amen? So we have to, again, this scripture, I love how it says here, we must let go of every wound. Come on, how many of us know that we've been hurt in the past and even in the present? We've been hurt by family. We've been hurt by people that, that are close to us. But how many know that we've also been church hurt? Anybody here ever been church hurt? Come on, when you've been church hurt, man, that really hurts. That's the last thing you expect to get hurt from people that are in the church, people that know the word, people that go to church and hear the word of God every Wednesday, every Sunday, and they're hearing it on the radio and watching it on social media, that's the last people you would think that would hurt you. But yet, we know that there is church hurt. But yet, here the scripture says, let go of every wound that pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Listen to me, you have to let go in order for God to take you forward to take you to that next level. You cannot let the people who hurt you make you bitter. Don't let people make you bitter. In other words, I've heard this, let, the, let, 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 let it go and let God make you better. We want to be better people. We want to be disciples. We want to be the light that shines on darkness. And so in order for that to happen, church, and for us to make a difference, is that's what we want is to make a difference. We have to let go of every wound that has pierced us. Come on. When we get hurt, it really, it, it, it hits hard. And many of those who are watching as well, you've been hurt. And there's people today that won't enter into a, the house of God because they've been church hurt. They will no longer go to church because they have been offended or because of something that was said by a pastor or a leader or maybe just another member of the church. They will no longer go to church and they will no longer follow God because of that reason. Listen, that, if that shakes you, you got to check yourself. Because we don't go to church for people. We go to church to serve God. We go to church to worship Him. We go to church to grow, to be intimate with the Lord. Amen. That is the true purpose. Yes, we go to connect. Yes, we go in fellowship. But the, the, the main priority, the main focus of why we go to church is to seek God and to draw closer to Him. And that's where we get our training. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. 
So we got to let things go. And, and then the scripture says, and the sin will so easily fall into. Come on. If we are not plugged in with God, then we will easily fall into sin. We will easily fall into temptation if we are not connected and rooted in the things of God. Yet the scripture says that we will be able to run the life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been already marked out before us. Come on, this, 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 this marathon, let me tell you something, it's not, it's, it's not an easy one. Now, I don't know if there anyone here can testify or anyone who's watching that can say, man, I, I love to run marathons. You know, marathons, from what I can recall, and when I hear people talk about marathons, it's normally like miles of running. It's not just a mile, but it's miles that you run. Now, I don't know if anyone likes to run, but I know for myself, I don't like running. You know, but I know that running is good for you, right? So, again, we have to understand that this marathon that we are in is not a quick marathon. We, we have to keep running until the Lord comes back. In other words, we got to keep serving him. We got to continue to stay focused on him. Don't look at other things that are going around. Again, when we came in worship here, we we're maybe tonight you were focused on who's coming, who's not. Man, man, there's not a lot of people here. Who cares? That shouldn't be your prime reason of why we go to the church. Is we're going to the house of God to be in the presence of God in his glory. This is why we go to church. So again, how do we fight the good fight of faith? That's the question tonight. How do we fight the good fight? That's the question that we all want to know. How do I fight this good fight, Pastor? How do we, how do we fight? How do we overcome? And that's what I want to minister on, on finishing this race. How do we do that? Well, here in the book of Hebrews, it describes fighting the good fight as running with what? Perseverance. Perseverance. Write that down tonight, perseverance. Because that word perseverance means not to give up. Don't give up. I mean, there's a lot of description of that word that we can translate into what it means. But again, ultimately, the one thing that sticks out to me is perseverance means don't give up. Because a runner will always run with the intention of what? Crossing the finish line. That's their intention is to run and finish the race. A, someone who runs a marathon or someone who's running in cross country, they don't run and then halfway they say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I just don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like running. I'm tired. No, they run with the intention of finishing and crossing that line. They train day in and day out. Church, they are giving it their all. They didn't just wake up one morning and say, you know what, I just feel like running a marathon. No, they put a lot of thought into it, and they were passionate about it. They, that was their, something that they enjoyed doing. They loved to run, and so they trained day in and day out, amen. They, they give it their all, even though, watch this, even though that there are moments where they don't feel like training. Even there are times where they don't feel like running because maybe, you know, maybe it's overcast, and, and, and maybe they just feel that, that, you know, that season of where it's nice and cold, and you just want to stay under the covers, and and you just want to relax and not run. But you know what? These people that run marathons, they train, this, they, they, they train themselves and they are disciplined. You have to be disciplined if you're going to be someone who runs a marathon. Amen? Because there are times that they're going to want to quit. If they don't train, if they don't continue to be faithful in their training, then let me tell you, they will quit. Because they will not have the stamina to finish and cross that finish line. Can I tell you, that's the same way that we are in this race. That there are times in your race with God that you are going to want to quit. And many of us can say, yeah, there have been seasons where I've wanted to give up. There were seasons where you were dry. There were seasons where you were hurt. There were seasons where you felt like quitting. There were seasons where you felt like, is it really worth it? And let me tell you something. God did not bring you this far. So that you can just quit. God did not cleanse you and deliver you and set you free. And he didn't, he didn't do all these things just so that you would not finish the finish line. See, every runner 
in the back of their mind, they remember all the hard work they put into this training. They remember all the sacrifice that they put in. But they discipline themselves not to give up. I'm here to tell you tonight that you have to have that in the back of your head that I am not going to get I'm not going to give up. I am not going to quit. Amen. God didn't break the curse in my family. God didn't restore my family. God didn't heal my body. God didn't be, you know, he restored my finances. He didn't do all this just so that I would not cross the finish line. He did all this so that you can finish it and that you can finish it faithfulness, being faithful. Yes, there's going to be seasons where you feel, you feel tired. Come on, everybody gets tired because we're human. You battle with the flesh every day and every day your flesh wants to just do the opposite of what the spirit wants to do. There may be times where you feel like you have no energy left in you. Amen? But let me remind you that you are not a quitter. You are not a quitter. You have to wake up every morning and say, I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to quit today. I'm not going to quit tomorrow. I'm not going to quit next week or next month or this year. I'm going to keep pressing in. Amen? There are people today, if you look in the news, man, it's going to make you want to quit. Because all you see in the news is negativity. And when I watch the news, all I see is, you know, all these, this, this violence and protesting. All I see is, you know, people in fear and doubt of what's going to happen next. That will make you quit. That will question you of whether or not to go to church or not and continue to serve God. But you're not a quitter. You have to tell yourself, you got to tell yourself, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit on my family. I'm not going to quit on what God has called me to do. I'm going to keep serving God to the fullness. I'm going to do it. Amen. If it hurts, I'm going to do it. If I don't feel like it, I'm going to continue to do it. Why? Because I want to finish and cross that finish line. God didn't clean you up so that you can go back to your old ways. He didn't do that just so that you can go back to that lifestyle. There's nothing to go back to. There's nothing in that world that waits you so that thinking that there's a better life in the world. God gave you purpose. And you have to be disciplined, you have to be focused, and you have to be determined if you're going to finish and cross that finish line. You have to be disciplined, focused, and determined. But how many of us know that this race is not a walk in the park? Come on, you, when you, a runner doesn't look pretty when they're running and finishing the cross, when they cross that line. They're sweaty, they smell, their hair is all over if they have hair, amen? But they are not looking pretty. In this race, no one said it, you were going to look pretty. But you're going to be in, this is a battlefield. There's war. Amen. And we have to be disciplined. We have to be focused. We have to be determined. I believe that God will provide you the ability, watch this, to be joyful in the midst of whatever you're going through. You can find joy in your valley. You can find joy in your circumstance. You can find joy in the battles that you go through on a daily basis. The world will never understand that. Because they have not yet encountered the true living God. It's when you encounter God, you will truly understand and know how to have joy in the midst of what you're battling. We need to continue to persevere. In other words, we need to keep going on. We need to keep pressing. Amen? In order to fight the good fight. Now, what are we fighting against? That's the question. Well, I want to show you here in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. If you're watching, you can go ahead and turn there as well. But this is what the Word of God says. It says, let us look only to Jesus. Let us look only to Jesus, the one who began our faith and who makes it perfect. He suffered death on the cross, but he accepted the shame as if it were nothing because of the joy that God put before him. And now he is sitting at the right side of God's throne. Hallelujah. He says, think about Jesus' example. 
He held on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. So do not get tired and stop trying. In Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it talks about there are hindrances and there are sin. Sins that will hold us back. How many of us have ever had a hindrance in this marathon? Distractions. Come on, there's all sorts of distractions that will cause you to lose focus on what God wants you to do and how to run this race. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about putting on the armor of God. And the armor of God that God gives you is to help you to what? To overcome the attacks and the temptations that try to slow you down. How many know that there are temptations that will slow you down? How many know that the, the enemy knows your weaknesses? He knows what you like and what you don't like. But when he knows your weakness, oh, he's pressing on that weakness. He is focused on that weakness, and he's doing everything in his power for you to give in to that weakness. That's why it's so important that we put on the armor of God. That's why it's important that every morning we crucify that flesh. That's why it's important that every morning we wake up and we pray and we get a hold of God so that we can overcome every temptation and every attack that the enemy has prepared to to. To, to, to attack us with, amen? That's the only way you can do this when the battle is by putting on the armor of God. We have to meditate on the word of God. Every day, you have to meditate on the word. The question is, what are you meditating on a daily basis? We have to stay connected. Stay connected and be accountable. We have to stay connected and be accountable. Because I believe that if you do these things, it will help you to continue to fight the good fight. This race is not for you to just run on your own. But you have other people that will cheer you on and support you. People that will pray for you. People that will speak life into you. That's, those are the things that we need. That, those are essential things that we need in our walk with God. Because it will also strengthen you. It will strengthen you to resist temptation and help you to keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on, it's so easy to lose focus when it comes to the things of God. Come on, a little thing, we can get so distract, distracted and we start focusing on other things. We can, have, we, we can be praying, say, God, today I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, and then all of a sudden, there's a little distraction and it just completely takes our eyes off of God. These are the things that are going to help you, church, to run the race, but also, more importantly, to finish it. So the, sec so the thing I want to share with you is finishing well requires finishing your work. Finishing your work. Paul told Timothy these words in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He says, I have finished the race. I did it. So Paul was an example to Timothy. He was an example to Timothy. He said, listen, if I can do it, you can do it. How many know that sometimes we need to hear from somebody else those words? If I can do it, you can do it. When you hear a testimony about someone saying, you know what, God did this for me, and he delivered me from that, and he healed and restored this in my life, then we begin to wonder, man, if God can do it for them, then God can definitely do it for me. It encourages us to keep running the race. Let me show you what Acts chapter 20, if you can go there with me. Acts chapter 20, verses 23 and 24. They weren't kidding when they said it's hot up here. Acts chapter 20, verses 23 and 24. This is what the word says. It says, I know only that in every city the Holy Spirit tells me that troubles and even jail wait for me. But watch, listen to what, how he's, what, what, what the next words are, gonna, are, are about to come forth. He says, I don't care about my own life. The most important thing is that I complete my mission. The work that the Lord Jesus gave me to tell people the good news about God's grace. This is what I love about Paul. Paul was so determined 
He didn't care. The Holy Spirit told him, hey, there's trouble that awaits you. Jail awaits you. And he wasn't shaking. He, w- he didn't lose his focus in spite of everything that knew what was coming to him. He's like, listen, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to speak the word of God, to give the good news about God's grace, that God loves them and God is able to set them free and God is able to do powerful things in their life. So he was on a mission and he wasn't going to let anybody or anything or any, dis- any, any spirits or any distractions to hinder him from doing what God has called him to do. The question is, what distractions are holding you back from doing what God has called you to do? Because every time, there are moments we can all agree that when we pray and we say, God, I'm, I want to step into this or I want to do that, all of a sudden there's a distraction. I mean, know what I'm talking about. You know, you say, I want to pray more. But the moment you start saying, I want to pray more, there's always a distraction. Or I want to get in ministry. And the moment you want to get into ministry, something happens. There's always a distraction. And Paul was focused here in Scripture to complete the task that God gave him. Colossians 4.17, here the Apostle Paul again, he said, Be sure, watch this, be sure to finish the work that the Lord gave you. Be sure to finish the work the Lord gave you. Paul's calling was what? To preach God's word. That was his mission in life. Now, listen to me carefully. Not everyone has been given the the same mission as Paul. But God has given us each a purpose. Amen? And because he's given us a purpose, we need to pursue our purpose because God wants you to be active and not proactive. God doesn't want you just to sit in the church. God just doesn't want you, listen to me, just to be watching church online. Are you hearing me? If you're watching me, God just doesn't want you to be comfortable and watching church online. Now, I get it. If, if, if you're sick, that's stay home. We want you to stay home and watch us. But when you are better, don't let fear hold you back from going to church and coming to seek God and being a part of the body of Christ. Because you can't run a race being at home. You can't run a race being at home. You can't run a race if you isolate yourself from everyone. For most of us, a major part of our purpose is just to, this is how a lot of people think. Their major purpose is to just be a good spouse. Or to be a good parent. Or to be a good Christian. A lot of people have that mindset. Well, I just want to be a good Christian. I want to be a good parent. I want to be a good spouse. I just want to be a good person. Can I tell you something? God has given you a much bigger calling than just to be a good Christian or to be a good spouse or to be a good parent. Listen to me, church. You need to continue to be faithful, but more importantly, be fruitful. Fruitfulness. Maybe God is calling you to step into ministry. If you're not in ministry and you've been going to church for a year, come on, you should be in ministry already. God just doesn't want you. Listen, that chair is warm enough. It's it's been warm enough for a long time already. you've, You've imprinted that chair, so it's time to get up and let somebody else put an imprint on that chair. Amen? But you, if you're not in ministry, get in ministry. Or maybe God is telling you, hey, get into a few ministries. Not just one, but few. You know what you can handle. You know how much you have on your plate. So if you can do more than one, hey, even greater, you're impacting people's lives. You're helping build the kingdom of God. God is calling you to get involved, amen, to do something in the ministry. What I do know is that if we don't follow through with his calling and finish the work that he has given us, at the end of it all, it will cause us to finish the race, watch this, with regret. With regret. I should have done this. Have you ever said those words? I should have done that. Man, I had the time to do this and I didn't do it. Or, you know, when God tells you to pray for someone, you're like, man, I should have prayed for them, but I didn't do it. 
Church, don't finish the race with regrets. It's not a good feeling to be able to have regrets when it comes to something, especially when it comes to the things of the kingdom of God. Amen? So if you're going to finish well, Paul said these words. He says, see to it that you complete the work you have received in the Lord. Another point that I want to share with you again is this, is that finishing well requires faithfulness to Christ. Faithfulness to Christ. Again, Paul said, I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. We need to continue to be faithful. Amen? We need to continue to trust in God. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this. It says, faith means being sure of the, of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real, even if we do not see it. Watch that. Faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real, even if we do not see it. Faith, church, requires you to step out into the unknown. That's what faith is. You just can't see it and then say, okay, well, I'm going to step out in faith and do it now because I see it. No, that's not faith. Faith is the unknown. Amen? Even when you can't physically see it, God's going to work it out. That's what you're believing, that God's going to make it happen. Listen to me. I have talked to people who have said, I have felt the call. I have felt the call into ministry. And as they started to pursue the ministry, they failed to see how it would work out because they never stepped out in faith. You know, how many people, again, I've been pastoring 12 years, and even before that, I've heard many people say, you know what, I feel the call. I feel the call. I heard God's voice. And as they're about to pursue it, either they lost their focus or there was a distraction or a hindrance, and they stopped pursuing it because of something. I tell you, that's the enemy. When you stop going forward, when God has spoken to you and you are no longer pursuing it, there has been something that has held you back. That's the enemy. And they never stepped out in faith. And they never were able to see what God truly had for them. I look back at my own life and I knew that my faith was being tested many times before I took the call to go to be a pastor. Let me tell you something. I, I, I felt like I was too young, too young to go pastor. But I was being obedient because I know that that's what God had called me to do. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how, what the first thing about pastoring. I didn't know anything about how to start a church. But I stepped out in faith. I stepped out into the unknown. Again, I went out with not even preaching a sermon. You think that I was born and I was like all of a sudden I came out and knew how to preach a message of how to put a message together? You guys think it's easy or like it just naturally happened? No. But I stepped out in faith into the unknown, not knowing what was going to happen, who was going to come. But I did it because I was being obedient. That's what you call obedience, church, when you step out in faith. It was one of the biggest steps I ever took. So what is God speaking to you to do? But I also believe that when I was sent out, there was a process of all the years that I was in training. I was in training. Again, I got saved at the age of 12. I get sent out to the age of 29. So think about it, that's a long, that long span of just serving in the house of God. Serving, serving, serving. And, and let me tell you something, it wasn't like I knew that at the age of 29 I was going to be sent out. It wasn't like I said, God, there, you, this has to be the year to be sent out. No, you know what? God knew when it was time for me. And let me tell you something, it was nothing that I was waiting for or expecting it was just, hey, God knows when it's time. You just got to be ready. You got to, like the Bible says, be ready in season and out of season, right? So, again, it's called obedience. When God says to do something, you do it. Don't question it. Don't try to figure out how it's going to happen. Just do it. God already knows how it's going to transition, how it's going to happen, and, you know, he's, he has the final word. Amen? If we're going to position ourselves to finish well, we need to learn to be faithful in pursuing him. Even if we don't fully see how he's going to do it. So let me ask you tonight, what can you do now? What can you do now 
that will help put you in the position of finishing well. What can you do now? Maybe it's being more faithful. Maybe it's being more fruitful. Maybe it's stepping out and start giving. Maybe it's, maybe it's stepping out and praying, reading your word. Maybe it's investing in, in, into people's lives. Maybe it's about maybe in, uh, inviting people to church. Maybe leading someone to salvation. I mean, what is God pressing upon your heart today that you need to do now rather than later? Because a lot of times we say that, oh, I'll do it later. Have you ever talked to it? You tell your kids or your spouse tells you, hey, can you do this? Oh, I'll do it later. We always use that word later. I'll do it later. And then later comes around and we don't do it. Right? And that's how arguments start all the time. What can you do now rather than later in the kingdom? So now we're going to pray and ask God to help us, church, so that we can position ourselves to finish well. We all, I believe we all want to finish well. Amen? But remember, it's impossible to finish the race on your own strength. You can't do this on your own. That's why we need to pray and ask God for help. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let me have every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to God tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a mighty God. We serve a good God. A God that has a plan and a purpose for each and every single life that is here and, and every life who is watching. And we all want to be able to hear the words that we all long to hear. And that is, well done, good, and faithful servant. That's what we desire to hear, church. Is that when we cross that finish line, when we stand before God, that he says to us, well done, good, and faithful servant. Tonight, with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around. Tonight, if you're here and you've never given your life to the Lord, you never repeated the Lord's uh, a salvation, a prayer, maybe you're backslidden in your heart and you want to rededicate your life to God. Tonight, we'd be honored to lead you to that prayer. Or maybe you're watching online and maybe you've never accepted Christ. Maybe this is the first time you're watching us. And right now, you're struggling. Maybe you're at a place where you just feel hopeless. Today is the day of salvation. Today is when you rededicate your life back to the Lord. If that's you, if you're watching, please just comment and say, that's me, I want to give my life to Jesus. Let us know who you are because we want to pray for you. But if there's anyone here in this house, in this service that says, I want to give my life to Jesus, I want you to real quickly just raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to give my life. I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. Is there anyone here that would say, I want to give my life to Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. Everyone here is saved. Hallelujah. If we can all stand tonight. We're going to go ahead and just worship. But I want to just pray. And I want to have a, just say a prayer, a, a corporate prayer tonight. Because we're all running this marathon. We're all running this race. And in this race, we need God's strength. We need his help. We need his counsel. We need his wisdom. We want to be able to overcome every attack, every temptation, every battle. But we know we can't do it on our own strength. We need God's strength tonight. So I want you to just close your eyes where you're at those who are watching, just close your eyes and just, just lift your hands. Because as we lift our hands, it's a sign of surrender today. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you tonight. Father, we know that we cannot run this race on our own. Father, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit. And we need your, we need your guidance and direction. Father, help us. Help us, Father, every day to crucify our flesh, that we would be led by your Spirit. Jesus, help us tonight. That when we feel weak, it's your strength 
that sustains us. Is that it is your strength that carries us. Lord, without you we're nothing. And not only do we want to finish this race, but we want to do it faithfully. We want to do everything that you've called us to do because we know that you've given us all purpose. Lord, we don't want to just be faithful, but we want to be fruitful. Lord, let let those who are not saved, let, let those who are struggling in their walk, let them see the light in us. Let them see the change in us. That when they see us, they will come to us and ask for prayer. Lord, let us be active and not proactive. Let us be doers of your word, Lord. And so I pray for those who are struggling right now. I pray for those who are sick right now, Lord, and we pray healing over their body in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over their body today, God. Father, we pray, we pray God, right now that you would, uh, Lord, fill them. Fill them with your spirit, Lord. I believe even right now as they're in their own homes, I think they feel the Holy Spirit. I believe they feel the presence of God. God, I thank you. I thank you that, God, that you are still moving regardless of what's going on in our world today. I believe that you can still bring forth revival into this house, a powerhouse. I believe that, God, that you are going to save our unsafe family members. I believe that, God, that you're going to continue to restore, God, families and marriages. And, Lord, I believe that you're going to continue to heal, God, bodies. And, Lord, you're going to continue to do miracles, signs, and wonders, God. I believe that you're going to continue, God, to bring forth breakthrough, God, upon every ministry in this church and other churches, God. I believe that, God, that you are doing something new and something fresh right now, God, as we speak. That, God, that you are the God of today, God, the yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we thank you tonight, Father. We thank you that, God, that you are moving in our midst. We know that, God, that you are going to impart your spirit, Lord, upon every soul that is here and those who are watching. I pray that this word, God, that it minister and that it encourage but that it would also challenge your people to rise up and not just sit back because this is not the time to sit back and get comfortable but this is a time to rise up this is a time to rise up and make a stand hallelujah Jesus we love you Father we give you all glory give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to worship. Amen. Hallelujah.